anybody so willing, they're waiting for you. I know who loves them now. Okay, but only one, because they got to go. Yeah, Steve had it. I didn't know you were a tourist like that. Anyway. My goodness. Yeah. Can you restart? <laughs> Nobody else likes Toys Others, I hope. <laughs> and I've had so many. Thank you. Now, let me tell you the story of how I end up with so many Twizzlers I even get to share. There's a lady in here who I will not name by name, but she is simply known as the Candy Lady. Anybody, especially, yeah, let's hear it for the Candy Lady, right? <laughs> Anybody who comes to Canaan Church for any length of time, especially if you're a young person, learns who the candy lady is very quickly because she's extremely reliable, extremely faithful with her candy. She'll find out what you like the most and <laughs> multiplies. So that's how I ended up with it. Well, actually, in my way, it's been kind of a special way because, you see, I don't just get them all the time is when I show up for music practice and the candy lady is kind of like a candy ninja. It's like, I'll turn around and do that and I turn, and they'll always be, there they are, boom, three of them sitting right on my music stand. Always there, every time, and playing on it. That's the first thing I wanted to share with you. Start there is a story on one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, the candy lady. Now the other thing I would like to share with you is a past. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. Let us not grow weary. Let us not grow tired of doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those of the household of faith. And that's why it was right, Sue, that you get the first Passover. That was, that was the household of faith in action. See with what large letters I have written to you with my own hand. What does this passage have to do with Twizzlers? <laughs> I mean, I, we started with Twizzlers that must come together somehow. And they do. And they tie together in a single word. Opportunity ties together Twizzlers with this passage. And so I started it looking through the New Testament, even the Old Testament, for where the word opportunity got used. And I, I found passages like this, uh, Romans 7, 8, But sin, taking the opportunity, by commandment produced in me all manner of evil desire, for apart from the law sin was dead. Sin took opportunity. And I thought, whoa, that's a negative. I didn't think in those terms. In Galatians 5.13, For you, brethren, having been called to liberty, only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but love one another and serve one another. So as I started looking up this, these words, uh, trying to look up context for opportunity, it was all coming up negative. And I went, whoa, maybe I really chose the wrong word here. Today. And then, just when I thought I'd better change I made a great discovery. The Biblical Greek has two words for opportunity. It has two words. The, the first word, this one that we're looking at here, is the word ephorme. And it's an interesting compound word in the Greek that we're using because the words were two words meshed together, starting point. Starting point. Every time I found the negative, it was this word, starting point. When it dealt with sin, it was starting point. When it dealt with uh, falling into things of the flesh, or another way of saying sin, starting point. And, and uh, 
and whether it was occasion or whatever word your translation might use for opportunity, that's what it means, starting point. I thought, wow, every time they use it this way, it's like, what are the implications of this word that they're using here like that? Starting point. Sin is tied up with starting point. What are the implications? Well, a starting point means you're starting somewhere, and you're going somewhere, and you're in somewhere. You have a starting point, an ending point, and everything in between. With sin has a starting point. There, that means, you know, we covered some things with this definition of sin. We said uh, the other week when we looked at it with the cross, uh, for those who were here, and, and we explained sin in a couple of ways. Sin was actions. And sin was a condition, do you remember? It was distance from God. Distance was the condition. So we know sin is a condition, sin is an action. And then I discovered sin is also a journey. Sin is a trip. And uh, doing wrong is this, is this trip. And it has a starting point, and you take steps, and you end up somewhere. That's the implication. It's an opportunity to go somewhere you don't want to go. And then I find the second word. And the second word is kairos. The second word is kairos. And it means something entirely different, even though we translate opportunity. It means a set time or a proper time. It means something in due season. It means something that's kind of in short uh, a length of time, something that's just for a while. Just for a while. Totally different context. This is where my Twizzlers come in. My Twizzlers are Cairo. You see that uh, uh, it's, uh, for one thing, it happens in due time. If, as a matter of fact, just to give you a physical illustration, those of you who have the Twizzlers and you can stare at it and meet them later, Everybody else can wish they had one. Kind of think of it, this is God's blessing in candy form. Just think of it, this is God's blessing there in wrapping. And by God's blessing, specific meaning to this. It means, and I'm talking about, this is a positive consequence for following the will of God and the plan of God in my life. When I'm following it, these things happen. That's, there it is in candy form. Now, how does the Twizzler fit in with this whole idea of Kairos? It's like this. On Thursdays, we have practice. And maybe you don't know what it is, but Candy Lady is actually one of the praised good singers. And so she is there on Thursday nights. And these things are sitting on my stand waiting for me. But, the, you know, I can't get her to mail them to my house. <laughs> i got to come here. I'm in the praise team. I'm supposed to be there practicing. That is one of my calling, one of my ministry, one of my jobs. I'm supposed to be there. And I'm supposed to be playing music. And if I'm at my music stand playing music, I find these. I find these sitting there. I get these when I'm where I'm supposed to be. And I don't get them if I'm not. God's blessings work just like these twisters. Just in the same way. Uh, they're waiting. But you have to be where they are. Blessings are cumulative. They add up. If I keep doing what I'm supposed to be doing, my life is full of twizzlers. doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And I don't mean that in the day as well. I'm not, you know, doing some bad thing. No, I'm not asking. I'm asking are you doing the thing you're supposed to be doing where you can make a difference in the world through Christ. And my dear, that is opportunity. That is what we want to have.